Good morning, respected teachers, seniors, and dear students. Welcome you all to the clinical class on MD cardiology. Today, we have uh, two patients and uh, a very expert panel of, uh, panel of expert and moderator. And to moderate the session, we have uh, with us uh, Dr. Dhiman Boning, Associate Professor, National Heart Foundation Hospital and Research Institute, and Dr. Taufik Shariar Hawk, who is also Associate Professor of National Heart Foundation Hospital and Research Institute. Dr. Taufik Shariar will join us virtually, and we have with us Dr. Dhiman Boning. And our examiner, our invited examiner of the panel is Professor Chaudhary Mishka Tamit from BSMMU. Good morning, sir, and very welcome to our uh, this uh, clinical class. So without further ado, I think we should move on to the class. And I would like to request Dr. Dhiman Bonik to moderate the session. Good morning, all. Uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, we have given a patient to a student, uh, Dr. Asif, and uh, he will be he is taking the history. And uh, we are now. Uh, going on the uh, history taking of the uh, patient. Uh, Dr. Asif, is this the completed? And he is taking uh, two minutes time. You have two minutes time. And you, you have, before you have 10 minutes also, 10 to 15 minutes. Sir, uh, Mr. Sir, sir, when he is uh, briefing the history, will I will he give a, patient, a, a student for examining, sir? Dhiman, I could not follow you. Sir, I am not able to see that. Oh, history that present could be. Then, what did I am not able to give examination? Did you give sir? Yes, yes, yes. I could not give examination. Yes, sir. Yes, could you give examination? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Asif. Hello. Assalamu alaikum, sir. I'm Dr. Asif, PhD resident of cardiology. I'm going to present the history of my patient. Mr. Moni Hussain, 26 years of age, non diabetic, no motensive, smoker, and he's a businessman hailing from Gajipur with the complaints of uh, shortness of breath for last one month and dizziness for the last one and a half month. The patient stated that um, the patient stated uh, the patient stated that he was uh, reasonably well reasonably well one year back. Then um, he first he first developed low to intermittent grade fever which uh, appeared in last December uh, December uh, last last year December which was uh, in a low to intermediate grade was associated with chills and rigors, and that fever persisted for almost five to six months. And he 
uh, went to several physicians for uh, this fever and he was treated uh, by different medications but the fever was not subsided and that fever uh, that fever uh, that fever persisted uh, uh, all through the day but uh, changes uh, changes severity uh, during time by time and sometimes it relieved by taking paracetamol or sometimes uh, spontaneously but along with the fever he also complained of a significant amount of weight loss that was almost 10 kg in the uh, in that 6 months and and that 6 months uh, finally uh, finally 6 months later uh, he he got relieved from the fever with some uh, extensive medications from different physicians and he was advised with some specific drugs recently uh, he came to us with a complaint of shortness of breath which he first noticed uh, one month ago one month ago the shortness shortness of breath was associated with moderate to severe exertion initially and uh, initially but it was progressive and later on especially for the last 7 to 10 days he felt shortness of breath on mild mild exertion and on query he also gives history of uh, shortness of breath or breathless uh, during sleeping time and for which uh, compelled him to awake from the sleep and um, and standing position or he used to walk to get relief from that um, and besides that the shortness of breath was not associated with any aggravating factor like dust film or any allergen there was no seasonal or diurnal variation and that was not associated with any wheeze but he noticed uh, sometimes he noticed uh, some form of cough uh, some form of cough but there was no associated uh, being for the or in his sputum he also complains uh, he also but that shortness of breath was not associated with any chest pain or any other uh, significant abnormality he also complains of uh, dizziness or he sometimes he felt uh, dizzy during movement or during uh, changing his posture but he gives no history of uh, brief loss of consciousness and that dizziness was not associated with any premonitory symptoms like nausea vomiting and on query he gives uh, he gives some history of fatigability and leg cramp during walking uh, when he went for the detailed history he also gives the history of a sudden sudden deterioration a sudden loss of his speech 6 months ago uh, during the recovery period of uh, time in his fever and that uh, that imp impairment of the speech will persist for almost one month and for that reason he went to um, several physicians but uh, several physicians and he took some treatment but he denies any complaint like weakness in any side of the body and he denies any history regarding uh, any swelling of the dependent part of the body um, uh, in past history uh, he denies he doesn't give any history regarding any uh, in his childhood regarding uh, joint pain fever or any any history consistent with um, chronic rheumatic fever and uh, now now he came to the hospital with the uh, latest complaints but and with latest complaints and he he is immunized as per the epa schedule uh, none of his family members are suffering any form of premature heart disease or any valvular heart disease but one of his brother is suffered from bronchial asthma okay ashish uh, what are the uh, wh why this patient is admitted this time the special shortness of breath and dizziness this time shortness of breath with dizziness dizziness yes. at present he does he have any shortness of breath no sir because he is under treatment he is under treatment so uh, he gave no history of uh, joint swelling no sir no history of joint swelling in how will you explain uh, the desert here you have mentioned the desert here six months back uh, sir as he gives a history of prolonged fever for last six months so in that case sir it may be a consequence of that fever like any any thromboembolic manifestation and or a stroke may i explain a, that long term fever may produce desert here no sir but if uh, i consider it as infective endocarditis that may result in thromboembolic manifestation like this sir. what uh, this is a young patient of about uh, 25 years yes sir 25 years young patient with a desert here uh, I, uh, what lesion you expect in this patient 
a patient of a young patient uh, yes. giving a history of dysarthria eh? uh, and he has no shortness of breath what cardiac condition do you expect in this patient sir it could be a case of valvular heart disease what valvular heart disease bsd the mitral valvular heart disease sir. mr can be mitral stenosis or yes mitral stenosis is your first it's most common thing in your mind yes. which came because in case of mr the uh, thrombombolic manifestation is rare it might occur in medicine anything may occur but in mr there is a very rare thrombombolic manifestation but you should suspect a patient that he has ms mitral stenosis sir any 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 comment sir <clears throat> yes uh, did you say anything about hemoptysis uh, yes sir uh, he he doesn't have any history of hemoptysis or and did you say anything about loss of appetite uh, no sir uh, he doesn't complain loss of appetite but he complained of significant weight loss almost 10 kg sir in that fever period sir did you say anything uh, about his contact with a uh, tubercular patient or his socio economic structure which could suggest that he is vulnerable to have some tuberculosis uh, no sir i missed that history sir did you say mention anything about his visit to an area which is endemic for cholera or malaria sir he is hailing from he hailed from gadipur sir but he, he could he could travel to to an area where there is malaria or cholera is endemic no it's a no travel history sir uh, did you mention all this thing in uh, when 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 you are giving a history of prolonged fever back in the mind you should also have the possibility of other chronic disease this patient maybe he is a case of congenital heart disease or valvular heart disease or any other disease but at the same time he can also have fever for different reason so all this thing should be covered when you are giving the history of people uh, you mention about arthralgia and other things and but you did not mention anything about the uh, although it is more common in female to have the collagen vascular disease but collagen vascular disease also is also a differential diagnosis for colon fever so you have to keep in your mind all the differential diagnosis because for last one year his chief complaint being the prolonged fever uh, and now he is complaining of shortness of breath and some dizziness so we expected a prolonged uh, elaborate history which could uh, focus on the differential diagnosis for prolonged fever as if clear is it clear yes sir thank you sir uh, and now, now can you tell, tell us what is what is your differential diagnosis about the, this prolonged fever sir when i from the, from the history it seems that that was an episode of infective endocarditis as it persisted for last uh, almost 6 months sir and now he why infective endocarditis should be should because, be because sir your uh, first differential times because sir, in his in his history he mentioned that uh, he is taking some drug that correlates with uh, valvular heart disease he is taking some um, uh, diuretics Uh, sir, anti uh, prophylactic antibiotic. That's why I was thinking. Uh, along with that, uh, he gave a, uh, he gave a history of thrombolytic manifestation like dysarthria. You have not cleared about the thrombolytic manifestation. It is r- relatively rare to have alone the speech disorder. Uh, generally, if the patient has got some uh, cerebral thrombosis due to emboli. generally it is massive one and have have got other focal neurological sign it is rather uncommon to have we we get all this uh, small focal sign like isolated dysarthria and another thing in lacunar in fact which is rather thrombotic manifestation rather than the embolic manifestation so you have to have in your mind have in your mind that what could be the uh, true nature of the cerebral or cerebral event alone dysarthria could be even without any cerebral involvement so uh, 
you should also be able to elaborate the dysarthria, whether it was aphasia, whether it was dysphagia, and whether at the same time he had any sort of weakness in the uh, right side of the body and other things. I mentioned that. Sir. No, uh, you mentioned that. Uh, whether uh, he had dysphagia at that time, because med um, lateral medullary syndrome, you have got also this dysarthria and dysphagia. So when the patient is complaining uh, only about the dysphagia or dysarthria, then uh, you also again have to have some differential diagnosis other than the embolism itself. So, uh, and at the times uh, we prescribe diuretics when the patient come with the history of shortness of breath injudiciously. So along the history of diuretics should not, uh, should not lead you to and to our diagnosis of infective endocarditis in first instance in this patient uh, when you're only taking the history. Because there are many conditions in which you can also have shortness of breath. For example, chronic fever may lead to anemia. That can be the cause of shortness of breath. For example, uh, for example, in tubercular patient, there can be constrictive pericarditis that can also lead to shortness of breath. There can be many things that, that occur. So uh, uh, your uh, thinking process should be widespread. I, I'd rather put tuberculosis as the first diagnosis when we, when we are taking the history because it is rather commoner, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, nature of yes, fever is again nature of fever is again important. When he suffered from the fever, with whether the fever was intermittent during during his suffering period, whether it was high grade, whether it, there was drenching, uh, sweating, uh, whether there was uh, whether the, he incidentally have found any sort of swelling in the abdomen or anywhere in the body, whether he has some rashes in the skin, whether had he had any oral ulcer. Uh, the history should be details. We expect the MD student in third part to be also competent in taking history as regards the internal medicine, not to forget about the internal medicine that you have come through, come across. You got my point? Yes, sir. I see? Yes, sir. When, when you have a, have a patient with history of prolonged fever, back in, in your mind, there should be that you are also dealing with a case. Uh, that you have passed through the, the second part of your MD examination uh, alone. When 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 you are facing uh, the long case alone, we expect that that your history should be very very elaborate, and you, you shouldn't miss any point. Okay, uh, as regard dizziness, uh, whether it was a dizzy spell or it was just dizziness, it seemed to be dizziness, just dizziness, sir, because. He noticed that during changing posture, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Topic, Dr. Topic. Sir, I, uh, Mr. Sir has uh, uh, discussed everything so elaborately. Uh, I think uh, I don't have anything more to say. Add. Okay, sir. We, 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 can you move, sir? Sir, to the next, uh, to the next uh, student. Uh, yes. Present. Okay. 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 okay, Dr. Faisal, will uh, what is your clinical findings of this patient? Assalamu alaikum, sir. I'm Dr. Wasak Faisal, MD is for the student. Uh, on precordial examination of this patient, uh, reveals on inspection. Uh, there is a visible impulse in the apical area and uh, uh, no other uh, chest deformity, skin change, or any scar mark. On palpation, uh, apex width is uh, displaced downward and laterally, and there is a systolic thrill in the apical area. There is a, a left parasternal hip and palpable P2 in the left second intercostal space. Uh, on auscultation, uh, the apex bit uh, is uh, on auscultation. Uh, the faster sound is soft, uh, pulmonary soft in all area. Pulmonary component of the second heart sound is loud in the uh, left second intercostal space. Uh, 
there is a consistolic murmur which is heard all over the area but best heard in the apical area which is uh, blowing in nature and 4 by 6 in grading and uh, uh, which radiates into the uh, left axilla and uh, lung base is clear. If clinical findings, what is your diagnosis? So my professional diagnosis is uh, mitral regurgitation with uh, pulmonary hypertension. Differential diagnosis. Uh, differential diagnosis. Sir, I have uh, uh, two differential diagnoses. One is pulmonary hypertension with tricuspid regurgitation. Another one is uh, ventricular septal defect with pulmonary hypertension. Then, what is the positive points in in your favor of mitral regurgitation? So uh, apex is, is uh, displaced downward and laterally. Then there is a systolic thrill in the apical area. There is a pan-systolic murmur all over the picodium, but best heard in the apical area and which radiates into the axilla. So how will you differentiate it from tricuspid regurgitation? Uh, so in tricuspid regurgitation, uh, the murmur should best heard in the uh, left pastoral uh, region and there will be no radiation to the axilla. To the axilla. And uh, uh, does tricuspid regurgitation has any thrill? Do you find any thrill in tricuspid regurgitation? Uh, Can you find any thrill in tricuspid regurgitation? So uh, we will not find any thrill in the apical area in tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, and from VHD? So in VHD, first heart sound will not be soft. And uh, the murmur will be best heard in the uh, left rational region, and there will be no uh, radiation in the. It may be radiated to the right uh, rational region or in the base, but not radiated to the axilla. Uh, you have uh, in palpation. You have mentioned that uh, there the apex in, in inspection, the apex bit is visible. Is, is it diffuse or it is localized? So it is diffuse. Then uh, diffuse apex. Diffuse uh, palpatory apex bit. What is your differential? So, uh, uh, metal regurgitation, then uh, aortic regurgitation, ventricular septal defect. Ventricular septal defect. In large ventricular. In large, in large, large ventricular. ventricular. Any other? Aortic regurgitation, sir. In dilated cardiomyopathy? It may be in dilated cardiomyopathy. Dilated cardiomyopathy or it ischemic cardiomyopathy. Any form of cardiomyopathy. Sir, the mask, sir. Uh, will you please describe the palpation of the apex again for me? Uh, apex bit is. Uh, 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 apex bit is displaced downward and laterally, which is forceful, uh, which is uh, forceful and uh, uh, is sustained, and uh, uh, it is about six centimeter. Uh, it is in the in left six intercostal space, uh, just medial to the uh, midline, lateral to the midline, and there is a systolic thrill in the apical area. Uh, did you measure the distance from the midline? <coughs> Particularly in this patient, is the apex is this? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I forget no. the measuring tape. Did you did you look for seventh space? Sorry, I looked for, but it's uh, I think sir, it's on sixth intercostal space. Just my so it is diffused. Just lateral to the midline. Just no, sir. It's in the anterior axillary line or mid axillary line. So lateral to the uh, anterior axillary line, sir. <coughs> lateral to the anterior axillary line. You make it sure whether the where is the location because in case of mitral regurgitation, 
<coughs> probably we are dealing with at least moderate to severe mitral stenosis in this patient. Uh, in that case, generally, when the patient has got volume overload condition, the apex is more displaced than we expect. Many a cases, you will get an impulse in the sixth space, but there can be an impulse in the seventh space. So it is always wise to palpate the apex from back. Do you know how to palpate the apex from the back? So that you, you do not miss the uh, most lateral and most uh, lower most distinct pulsation. Uh, did, you, did you palpate the patient from the back? No, sir. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned about the character of the pass as uh, it was forceful and insustained, right? And yes. what, you, what, what, what did you mean? What did you mean by diffuse pulsation? So diffuse means it will not, uh, I cannot localize the uh, apex bit. It will uh, felt over a large area in the picodium. It means the size of the apex has been enlarged, yes, but sir. you feel it distinctly, isn't it? Yes. Because you, you have mentioned that it is forceful and insustained. Had this patient not a distinct impulse in the apex, you could not mention it as forceful and sustained. Diffuse mean actually when you really cannot locate where, where actually the apex is. And generally it happens with a right ventricular hypertrophy. But uh, if you want to mention that the apex is, uh, apex is located in more than one space, then probably you should mention that the apex, um, the size of the apex is enlarged. You've got my point? Yes, sir. Diffuse uh, apex falls into the category of character of the apex, not as the size of the apex. And many of many of the cases when when we when we deal with volume overload condition, then we get <clears throat> the apex is occupying in more than one space, and then we say the apex is, is generally enlarged. Okay. Yes. Um, what do you think? Uh, what is the severity of mitral regurgitation in this patient? If 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 you are dealing with a case of mitral regurgitation? Uh, moderate to severe. Why? So, so I just examined the picodium. Uh, here the apex bit is uh, uh, forceful and insistent. There is a systolic thrill and uh, faster sound is soft. And there is also uh, fissures of pulmonary hypertension and uh, the murmur is uh, Blowing and uh, murmur gate is four by six, and it's the apex bit is displaced uh, downward and laterally. All these features coincide with uh, moderate to severe. Of all this feature, which is suggestive of severity of mitral severe. Which features? You have mentioned about many features, but all the all, all of those do not suggest the severity. Particularly, which which features suggest the severity? So, uh, faster some soft. Yes. Then apex is displaced downward laterally. Yes. And, uh, and there is a uh, there is pulmonary hypertension. Three sorts of pulmonary hypertension. Did you get the uh, uh, precordial lift? Similar, no, similar to that of parasternal lift. Uh, no, sir. The whole precordium is bulging and coming forward. No, sir. Just there is a visible impulse, but there's no precordial lift. Just this left parasternal uh, hip is formed. Okay. Uh, do you want to bring patent doctor sartoriosis as your differential diagnosis? Sir. Uh, uh, as the mama is only uh, occupied in the systole, uh, I, I will not add certain doctor's arteriosus in his DD. Okay, I would not also mention this as differential diagnosis since the patient has got thrill. But had he not been any thrill with loud second heart sound alone, uh, I would I would bring PDA as differential diagnosis because in severe patent patent doctor sartoriasis with pulmonary hypertension, you may not be able to get the diastolic component of the murmur. Yes. Uh, so uh, you have done well. Uh, you have also uh, 
defended well, but uh, will you, you will you demonstrate me how to show how to look at the apex from the back, so that you do not miss miss the most lateral lateral impulse. I think it is a rare examination procedure. You all see this procedure. It is common mistake to miss the apex location of the apex. Many a time you say that it is in the sixth space, but it remains in the seventh space. It's common with severe mitral cell regurgitation and aortic regurgitation. You use your le left palm. Hmm. In, in the anterior axillary line, I think apex. You see some of seven, eh? Okay. You, you, have, you, have found, you have found any difference? No. No, sir. No, sir. Then you, you, you auscultate the back as well. Auscultate the back as well. So the apex bit in uh, the same position, but uh, I, mm, I find the radiation in the back, just uh, lateral to the uh, scapular line. Okay, when when you get mitral regurgitation, uh, generally you mentioned that there is radiation in the axilla, right? Yes. <clears throat> but at a time, the murmur of mitral regurgitation can be heard from uh, vortex to the sacrum. And many a times, many, many a time it is common to find out in this marble in the back. It, it minimizes your differential diagnosis. You got the point. And also, uh, it, it helps you to you know, make you perfect about your examination that you have examined the back uh, and you have auscultated the back to look at the radiation. Because uh, few murmur, only few murmur that goes to the back. So always, when you have the mitral regurgitation and radiation in the axilla, you also look at the back for the radiation. Yes, sir. Okay. So I, I would just like to know if there is any role of uh, dynamic auscultation in this case. Sometimes examiners want to know. Yes, sir. If uh, we uh, could, if we want to find the cause of the mitral regurgitation, uh, there may be uh, mitral valve prolapse. Uh, here uh, we can differentiate the uh, rheumatic origin or other causes from the um, mitral valve prolapse by dynamic auscultation. Thank you. Uh, so in uh, in mitral valve prolapse, uh, after standing or valsalva maneuver, uh, there will be decreased venous return. The LV volume will be decreased, and uh, the uh, the uh, mid systolic click of mitral valve prolapse will uh, uh, will be nearer to the faster sound and the murmur will be prolonged. But in other cases, the in uh, mitral regurgitation, uh, in after standing or valve salva maneuver, after uh, the LV volume decrease, the murmur will be uh, shortened. And opposite will happen after uh, uh, squatting position. Thank you. Sir, I want you, to... you, you, you do not consider a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as possible. Yes, sir. It, it may be wrong, but uh, 
in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy there is right. also opposite effect will uh, occurs than the okay. mitral regurgitation okay then then you mention about both mitral valve prolapse and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy yes, yes. dynamic yes. consultation when examiner ask you about dynamic consultation back in their mind is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy yes. more hypertrophic cardiomyopathy than mitral valve prolapse but but what you have done well by is mentioning mitral valve prolapse Dhiman sir, mic to mona off hoye achhe. Sorry, uh, I I want to sir uh, uh, deal with the hemoptysis. Sir was uh, telling me sir, sir, did you elaborate the hemoptysis? How will you elaborate the hemoptysis? Because this is an important issue in patient with like this in history. Sir, my patient didn't give any history. Uh, yes, if this patient has hemoptysis, what will you ask? Sir, in that case. Uh, Uh, i will ask about the uh, amount of the blood whether it is uh, mixed or it is um, bright red in color then frequency can you have any in, any difference from the uh, color of the hemoptysis or the yes, sir. Uh, co- uh, co- uh, 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 or the appearance of hemoptysis yes, sir. Uh, it will be pink frothy uh, in case of uh, if it uh, results from uh, left ventricular failure sir and, and for my Uh, sir, in other causes, it may be uh, fresh blood or mixed with the sputum. Other causes. Fresh blood. What are the different? If it is pink and frothy, your patient is having uh, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema, yes, sir. Not left ventricular hy- uh, failure. Pulmonary But it, because in case of MS, you can't say left ventricular yes, failure. Yes, sir. It pulmonary is pulmonary edema due to pulmonary edema. And it is if it is blood stained, then what are your differentials? Yes, sir, there are uh, other diseases like it can be a case of consequence of any respiratory infection. Or uh, theoretically, sir, bronchial carcinoma, or any other lung pathology, sir. Can it be due to the lesion is uh, valvular lesion? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in, you you in should that... mention it first. Then you should mention it first. What valvular lesion, sir? Uh, in in case of in ca- in, in this of patient, can it happen? With yes, sir. Then? Yes, sir. If How? The, if the bronchial vessels uh, ruptured, it may result in yes. You should phase. mention it first. the bronchial rupture dilatation and rupture of the bronchial vessel is called then it will pro- produce uh, massive hemoptysis sorry hemoptysis frank with frank blood sir uh, do you had any comments sir in this regard sir yes hemoptysis is, is an important um, symptom in part of cardiovascular examination when you are taking the history there are at least six causes for hemoptysis and in single disease you can have different causes for hemoptysis for example in mitral stenosis Hemoptysis can be there due to acute pulmonary edema, as you have mentioned, frothy skin. Acute pulmonary edema may develop in patient with mitral stenosis when they suddenly develop atrial fibrillation, and not uncommon. The patient with mitral stenosis may have uh, hemoptysis due to involvement of concomitant bronchitis because upper respiratory tract infection is common with mitral stenosis. And then, as you have mentioned, then the blood will be stained with uh, sputum. The patient with mitral stenosis can also have hemoptysis due to pulmonary hypertension due to rupture of the pulmonary capillary patient with mitral stenosis can also have hemoptysis due to rupture of the pulmonary vein itself and when there is massive pulmonary or moderate degree of uh, huge uh, hemoptysis in patient with mitral stenosis we consider that this case could be moderate mitral stenosis <clears throat> because in chronic severe mitral stenosis <clears throat> the pulmonary vein become fibrous and thickened so it does not rupture and does not give frank hemoptysis so uh, you can also have atrial fibrillation and the pulmonary embolism which can give rise to pulmonary uh, hemoptysis so there are several mechanism of uh, um, hemoptysis in patient with cardiovascular disease and as uh, as uh, uh, dr dimon has rightly mentioned the differential diagnosis from the lung cause is also important as you have already mentioned so always give emphasis on hemoptysis in patient with cardiovascular disease and always try to find out there can be multiple causes in a single disease that also should be there back in your mind and another thing in this regard that you should take a drug history also in case of valvular disease whether the patient is taking warfarin antiphlebotic the warfarin may produce hemoptysis in such patient in our in our the warfarin may produce because there is mitral stenosis with thrombus then we prescribe for warfarin then the patient may mitral hemoptysis so this could be 
Himapraj is an important feature in a long case, and you should elaborate this history of Himapraj. Sir, then we, sir, uh, sir, next uh, we, we uh, It is short, short case and paper, I'm okay to discuss the time. Did you look at the neck? Yes, sir. Uh, though, sir, I was asked to examine only the precordium, but uh, um, uh, I just, I just inspect. It is dekhona. It is sure dekhona. Neki kono pulsation. Look at any, whether there is any pulse. Examination of the pulse and the epigastrium is part of examination of precordium. Yes. Don't forget sir, it. Yes. Don't you yes. ever forget it. Sir, neki, <coughs> sir, is neki is a part of examination of precordium, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yes. First of all, neck is a part of examination of the precordium. You must see the neck. And also the epigastrium. Yes, yes, sir. Also the epigastrium. I want to stop you here. When you are uh, uh, palpating the carotid of the left side, you should do it by your left hand. You can't do it because in our, when uh, we are students, I want to mention it here. In, it, in the clinical book, it was written that you cannot obstruct the face of the patient. It is uh, the senior teachers uh, will not allow it in short case or in long case. You cannot obstruct the face of the patient. It is a, it is a, it seems that you did not examine the patient for, uh, you cannot, you, you should palpate the, yes, with, with your, from the, the, this way. Uh, what you have found in the neck? Why, why, why examination of the neck was important in this patient? Sir, uh, uh, there may be uh, uh, raised uh, JVP number one. Uh, we can find uh, we can found uh, 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 there may be radiation of the marmar also in the uh, neck. Uh, Particularly in, in this patient, uh, did you find anything, any pulsation in the neck? So I couldn't find any pulsation. Had there been any pulsation, which would, which which wave could be prominent in this patient? Had this there any pulsation in the neck, which wave? Could be prominent. Or there if, may be C C V or if if this uh, 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 when you have made uh, when you have made a differential diagnosis of mitral regurgitation with tricuspid regurgitation and ventricular septal defect, examination is of the neck become important. So uh, uh, if, because because in patient with tricuspid regurgitation you would have get a prominent V wave. Yeah. with uh, mitral regurgitation and pulmonary hypertension due to pulmonary prominent A waves. Okay. Prominent A wave. And had this patient a case of ventricular septal defect with VHD, then you would not have get any sort of wave in the in the neck. So these are the very finer thing, uh, but you 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 will you will be smarter if you can mention this by examining the neck. Also, you can make some different. You can differentiate from other diseases. So never forget about examining the neck, especially the pulsation in the neck. Many a times you will get pulsation rather than not getting it. Because in normal person, the jugular venous uh, pressure is almost two centimeters of water. 
at the root of the neck, you, you will get some sort of pulsation in majority of the patient. So look at the pulsation and make a habit of looking at the pulsation of the neck and pulsation in the epic stream. Uh, although this is a little advanced, uh, we generally do not expect our student to uh, go uh, thoroughly on the neck examination. But uh, to my consideration, since you are going to be a cardiologist, bona fide cardiologist, you just cannot miss the examination of the neck. I was impressed with some presentation by Professor Atahar Ali uh, when he was presenting some cases on arrhythmia and he showed some video of neck, uh, especially showing the differential diagnosis between SVT and VT and other things. So examination of the, of the neck is so important in cardiovascular system. Uh, don't, don't you ever miss it. move on to the next case it is a short case anyone you, you auscultate the precordium
okay what is your clinic finding what are the finding assalamu alaikum i am dr nurul islam md final part student examine is july 2020 2021 auscultation of of the precordium of my patient reveal auscultation of precordium of my patient reveals there is normally audible first and second heart sound a aortic component of the second heart sound is soft and there is a harsh ejection systolic murmur in the aortic in right second intercostal space that radiate to the both both side of the neck both side of the neck and the, and lung vessels are clear no other no other abnormal visible then what is your diagnosis my diagnosis is aortic stenosis do you have any differentials for this patient yes i have one dd hypertrophy prostate cardiomyopathy hocm then uh, how will you differentiate between hocm and uh, aortic stenosis in this patient in that case i need to do the dynamic auscultation and in case of standing and valsalva maneuver when there is a reduction in the venous return there will be, will be in case of aortic stenosis normal duration will be shorten but in case of hocm it will be prolonged and in case of lying and squatting it will be opposite when venous return is increased in case of hocm reverse reverse is this patient has a radiation to the neck yeah both side of the neck. both side of the neck uh, then which one is uh, which do you think there is it is Yeah, in okay. hocm do you do have any radiation to the neck easily eh easily usually easily not usually not you can find but usually it is not then uh, can you differentiate if it is aortic stenosis can you differentiate it or, or whether it is uh, valvular or it is supravalvular yes how for this patient there is second aortic component of the second heart sound is soft so this is valvular it is valvular in case of supravalvular type is aortic heart, second heart sound will be normally audible no another important finding sir the sir sir will sir sir any comment sir in, in this uh, will you please describe the murmur again there is a harsh ejection systolic murmur murmur uh, look best heart heart all over the pericardium which is best heart at the left second right second intercostal space and murmur grading of the murmur is 3 by 6 and is radiate to the both side of the neck and best heart on leaning forward breath hold after expiration did you find any murmur in the mitral area there is a murmur same murmur audible all over the pericardium is no other different murmur then did you get any murmur at the left sternal edge yes yes i look for the diastolic murmur in the left sternal systolic murmur i am talking about the same systolic murmur whether it could be heard in the left sternal edge yeah, it's almost same intensity all over the pericardium but but best heart and the right second intercostal space did you mention that when you describe about the murmur on first time description i actually forgot but later i is it important to mention that the murmur uh, of same intensity could intensity could be heard in the apex and in the left sternal edge as well as in the yes. right second intercostal space was it important Yes, it's important. Why?
because the murmur of the aortic stenosis as the patient's age progresses, it tends to move towards the apex, you know. And many a times you don't get the murmur in the right intercostal space, rather you get it in the left sternum space and in the apex. When you have made uh, when you have made a diagnosis, differential diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, then the murmur has to be in the left sternal is. Any murmur that confined in the right uh, second right intercostal space cannot be differential diagnosis for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. You got my point. Yes. When you have mentioned that your differential diagnosis is HCM, then uh, then you have to mention that actually the murmur was also present in the left sternal age, and that is why you are making the differential diagnosis. Because, because the murmur of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy never come to the right second intercostal space. When you have only murmur in the right second intercostal space, your differential diagnosis will be different. When you have the murmur of aortic stenosis in the left sternal age, then your differential diagnosis is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is the common mistake that we actually make. And when there is confined in the right second intercostal space, space, it is more or less in an elderly patient with aortic stenosis. But in young patient, you have many differential diagnoses because in some uh, innocent murmur uh, uh, can be there in the right second intercostal space and in the supraclavicular space. In some cases, patient with coarctation of the aorta, you can hear the murmur in the right second intercostal space and in, this, uh, in the supraclavicular space. In some patient with supravalvular, supracrystal ventricular septal defect, even you can see hear the murmur in the neck and in the second intercostal space. So differential diagnosis will vary according to the patient's finding. You got my point. In particular, in this patient, we expect that his murmur will be widespread from the apex, uh, from the aortic area up to the apex. If you draw a line, everywhere you can hear the murmur. And particularly in this patient, you have heard this murmur in, in the similar fashion. So you describe the murmur as you have found it. You have found it, but you failed to mention it. You got my point? Yes. Is it clear? Sir, sir in, informed you everything. Yes, Do you clear? Yes. You, you summarize this thing, what sir told. Yes, for all of us. In case of aortic stenosis, the murmur is really hard all over the precordium and with and sometimes even it's best hurt in the apical area than in the elderly heart, patient. In elderly patient. In elderly please mention that in elderly patient. Generally in young patient it do, do not have that widespread uh, location. And if I find a murmur confined to the right second intercostal space only, then my DD will be only aortic stenosis in case of an older age patient. And if that murmur also hurt in the left. No, you, in elderly patient, you have uh, sclerosis of the aortic valve as differential diagnosis. If second heart sound is normal or loud. Aortic sclerosis. Sclerosis, sclerosis of the aortic valve. In sclerosis. You get the functional systolic murmur. Yes. Yeah. Whenever murmur is found in all over the precordium and also the left side of the sternum, then the hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy will come into the DD. And I need to differentiate this with the dynamic oscillation. One more thing about dynamic oscillation. In aortic stenosis also, you have, you, you have your murmur changed during uh, dynamic oscillation. Because the aortic uh, stenosis, the murmur is due to gradient between uh, uh, the ventricle and the aortic, aortic. Uh, aortic pressure difference. When you uh, have the hand grip and other thing, you have got increased peripheral vascular resistance, which increases the pressure, both this the systolic and diastolic. In that case, I, the murmur attenuates. So when when you mention dynamic auscultation as a maneuver to differentiate between HCM and aortic stenosis, you should also have your, in your mind that uh, there are some differences in murmur during dynamic auscultation in aortic stenosis as well. Jamon hypertrophic cardiomyopathy to change her aortic stenosis, you can do dynamic oscillation to change it. Okay. Money concept concept clear. Yes. 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 But uh, you are examining, uh, we want you to learn also. Tikna, Jenner Akab Halo, Jenner Akhetar put them into one of the prepared coro. Tatan at the depth of the details, Samajina, the Mastinjonikub Halakursas, I'm impressed. 
মানে খুব পাস করার জন্য যথেষ্ট সেগুলো অনেক ভালো নম্বর পাওয়ার জন্য যথেষ্ট কিন্তু আরো ভালো করবা যদি এগুলো সবকিছু ভালো বলতে পারো তখন হয় কি একটা জায়গা খারাপ করলেও উঠে আসা যায় যাক খুব ভালো করে বোঝা যায় যে কোনো কারণে ওই জায়গাটা খারাপ হয়েছে কিন্তু আসলে জেনারেলি তুমি খুব ভালো আমার জানো কিছু কিছু স্টুডেন্টদের আমরা আশি নাম্বার ওদের এইটটি মার্কস তোমাদের এখানে শামীমা আছে না রেজিস্টার ওর তো ভালো করলে আমরা খুব ভালো নাম্বার দিতে চাই আমরা ফেল করাতেই চাই না কিন্তু যারা ভালো করে তাদের আমরা আশি পঁচাশি এরকম দিতে চাই মানে <laughs> মানে উই ডিফারেনশিয়েট বিটুইন কনকমিটেন্ট আয়োটিক স্টেনোসিস এন্ড আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন এন্ড আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন অ্যালোন তাই তো আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন এর যে গ্রেডিয়েন্টটা তোমার যদি রেয়ারলি থ্রিল প্রোডিউস করে তাহলে দিস দিস রিগার্জিটেশন হ্যাজ টু বি সিভিয়ার ওয়ান তোমার অন্যান্য ফাইন্ডিং এ যদি আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন সিভিয়ার না পাওয়া যায় তাহলে তুমি এক্সপ্লেইন করতে পারছো না ইন দ্যাট কেস ইওর ডিফারেনশিয়াল ডায়াগনোসিস শুড বি কনফাইন্ড অন আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন এন্ড আয়োটিক স্টেনোসিস if you have got a severe aortic regurgitation as revealed by other finding we can clinically find out the uh, we have clinical parameter for severity of aortic regurgitation severe aortic regurgitation and in that case you have if you have got uh, systolic murmur then you really cannot d- differentiate because uh, uh, almost the same similar feature even trill can be uh, also perceived in severe aortic regurgitation generally speaking কিন্তু একাডেমিক ইন্টারেস্ট থাকে কিংবা পরীক্ষা ফেস করার জন্য যদি پیشنটে থ্রিল থাকে তাহলে দ্যাট ক্যান বি আ ডিফারেনশিয়েটিং পয়েন্ট বিটুইন আয়োটিক স্টেনোসিস এন্ড আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন ভার্সাস আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন অ্যালোন ডিড ইউ গেট মাই অ্যানসার ইয়েস স্যার ফাইন্ডিং দ্যাট দি ফাইন্ডিং দ্যাট রিফ্লেক্স সিভিয়ারিটি অফ দ্য আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন পার্টিকুলারলি টু অ্যানসার দিস क्वेश्चन উইল বি ভেরি রিলেভেন্ট in that case you mention about the severity of the aortic regurgitation and you mention that this patient do have severe aortic regurgitation and it is possible that he has got only aortic regurgitation and in very severe cases there can be also a thrill so apply the logic all the time but if you get a mild aortic regurgitation or mild to moderate aortic regurgitation and a systolic murmur with thrill then there has to be extra aortic stenosis along with aortic regurgitation thank you sir Sir, we move on to the uh, our uh, slide slide session next. Okay. So Shamim is uh, going to share the screen, sir. A- anyone? Sir, we have given two catheters, sir. Yes, this is what you have to contribute to the VC. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Hello. In the left side, uh, there is a left Judkins uh, diagnostic catheter. And uh, in the right side, uh, if you, uh, sir, yes. 
PBU capital. PBU মানে extra backup. Backup capital. Abbreviation of PBU in the exam we cannot say PBU. It is extra backup. Extra backup capital. For E is the extra B for B and U for up. Extra backup catheter. It, it is a guiding catheter or diagnostic catheter. So it's a, um, a guiding catheter. Guiding catheter. Okay. So how will you differentiate between a guiding catheter and the di diagnostic catheter? It is a common question in the exam asked by the, our teacher. By seeing this, both both is a left-sided catheter. The left one is a diagnostic Jutkins, yes, yes. and right one is an extra backup catheter, for a guiding catheter. Yes. And how will you differentiate this uh, from uh, two things? The, whether it is diagnostic or it is a guiding, it is commonly asked in the exam. In anyone? It is a one was the left Jutkins diagnostic, and other one is the extra backup guiding catheter. How will you differentiate this? Whether it is diagnostic or guiding? So, uh, in case of in case of diagnostic catheter, in case of diagnostic catheter, the distal end will be um, narrower than the uh, other portion. But in case of uh, guiding catheter, the uh, diameter is almost diameter is same, but not also the length. Yeah. And this is the one of the points because it is narrow. You see that the distal part is narrow in, the, in case of diagnostic, but it is almost equal. Yes, it is important. There is a soft portion in the guiding catheter because you can pass anything uh, through this wire, balloon, even a rotor wire, even eye bus, anything. So it is a soft. There is a soft tip. In the guiding catheter. Other thing? Other thing you should mention first. This is the first. This half, distal half. Distal half is stout, more stout. Distal half of the, you see, distal half of the guiding catheter is more stout. Uh, and the distal half of the diagnostic catheter is more, less stouter than the, it is important. And the uh, Lumen from beginning to the end in a guiding catheter is equal. But in case of diagnostic catheter, you can pull the catheter. The distal part is narrow, narrower than the proximal part. And the uh, tip, there is a softer part for more accumulation of the device and wires and things. Okay, uh, by extra backup, what we do? PTCA we guide the panel. Which side PTCA? Left side. Left side. In, you can use it? In the left side. In the most commonly in the left side. Sir, anomalous origin dakajano kit is for a sir. Anomalous origin dakajano, RCA, anomalous origin by an RCA anomalous by in case of radial. In case of radial anomalous, you cannot hook the left side with a tiger, then you can go with an extra backup catheter. You should mention it. In case of, uh, if in radial, if you cannot hook the left side with a tiger, then the guide, guide catheter is the guiding extra backup. Sir, any comments, sir? Tofik? Tofik, I Intervention is point I mean, 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 I uh, there are difference in arm. They are not distally, they should take the arm as the actum distally. So, taking to guiding catheter nine. Tikna? Yes, sir. 
Is it a differentiating point? Do you want to take it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is a differentiating point because in extra backup there is no arm. Acha. No arm money? No, sir, there is a there is a, sir only one U U shape at turn and it it, it uh, extra backup maybe extra backup maybe three or three point five according to the size of the arm. Kind arm arm as well. Can that 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 arm not? That extra arm as well. That no three arm. Acha. ियंट्री क्षेत्र or uh, severe left main disease then which catheter is preferable so if you extra backup catheter no it is jutkin this left jutkin guiding catheter in case of ostial or in case of severe left main disease and with 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 poor perforation with the uh, the left sided catheter guiding catheter if you do want to do a a pci of a left main or cbl left main disease then you should have catheter uh left jutkins is the one of the good choice and with perforation port that is there are ports because if you hook the left side then then the pressure will be damp then if you will find no pressure in the uh, in your monitor so it will be very difficult for you to do the pt scan So if there is pores, then you can have the patient is left pain. There will be damping of the pressure. So if there is pores, then it will give the pressure for you. Sir, anything you want to add, sir? Uh, if you allow, I tell Jinish sir, it is Janan Janan. I mean, it is Janan Janan. Jigesh, please say, Bala Janan. It is our mana. It is it is rather easier to engage Jutkin rather than the extra backup. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, it, it it is more easier, more easier. धोरा yes. एक तो पहले तुम लोग PCI शुरू कर सकते हैं mid mid L deletion somehow significant mid L deletion आह ये patient टर जनन तुम्हारे मानी पहले पहले तो engage करा टाइपले एक तो difficult तुम्हारे जो दी था इसे हर extra backup है relatively difficult जब हम करते करते हैं ना कि तो जुट किस तरह से समझते हैं तो तुम्हें easily perform करते पार वाली मानी खूब uncomplicated cases calcified ना bifurcation deletion ना सिंपल लेशन गुलाब जो ना जुटकिंस टाइप बाहर करा जाते पारे और उन एक्स्ट्रा बैकअप पे चेता इंगेज करा रिलेटिवली शाहोज अब हम इटा ते तुम्हारे डिसेक्शन का चांस आने पर नुतों निश्चय आई मिक्स अपशन पसंद करी सिंपल लेशन था क्ले जुटकिंस टाइप बाहर करते दिमाग ने कमेंट सुनते चाहिए क्यों ভালো আর কি যেহেতু নতুন হিসাবে তোমরা যখন শুরু করো তখন শুরু করতে পারো মানে সেফ রিলেটিভলি সেফ এই সমস্ত ক্ষেত্রে এক্সট্রা ব্যাকআপ ইজ মোর ইউজ নাও ইট ইজ হোয়েন পিপল আর ডুইং মোর রেডিয়াল ইন্টারভেনশন অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইয়েস ইয়েস তো বিকজ देयर ইজ ইন রেডিয়াল আই হ্যাভ মেনশনড ইন রেডিয়াল ইন্টারভেনশন ফর ডুইং এন্ড পিসিআই অফ এ леফট সাইড ইন রেডিয়াল এক্সট্রা ব্যাকআপ ইজ মোর ইউজ Sir, we want to move to the next okay, okay, okay. topic, sir. This is an ECG. Anyone? Arudhika, Arudhika, sir. Okay. Let's start with the first one. 
Uh, there is a short PI inter, uh, interval in, uh, in the all league. <coughs> and there is a uh, right axis, right axis, right axis, right axis, right axis, right axis, uh, right axis normal. Uh, so, so my diagnosis case of uh, left. Lab is left ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy. You have mentioned uh, B1 and B6 is more than 35 years. You have mentioned PR interval is short. Where is it short? It's 14. Minimum 14. Yes, sir. Other finding? Um, Other important findings are there in this ECG. Sorry, P. Onic, P. Onic Q, other, uh, other many findings. Two, uh, two, three two, uh, Q in, yes, two, uh, in case of two, there is narrow Q wave. In case of three, there More is pathological Q wave. In case of uh, ABF, there is pathological. In this support, we have ST segment, slight ST segment uh, elevation, elevation in three and ABF. ABF. And there is T inversion in three and ABF. Yes, sir. You have missed the important finding. What is this? Yes, sir. Uh, this may be uh, old myocardial infection with uh, hypertrophy. Old myocardial infection where? Uh, sir, uh, inferiorly. Inferiorly. Uh, uh, other, other finding in this ECG? Any other finding in this ECG? There is an important, uh, there is P wave in V1, the P wave, if there is a negative deflection, more negative deflection, then it is a finding of left, uh, left atrial enlargement. When you say there is LVH in this patient, what is the type of the LVH? You should mention. You have, men you have missed everything almost. It volume, is a volume overload. Yes. Then many findings are there in this ECG. There's LBH with volume overload, inferior MI, left atrial enlargement. Mm -hmm. Sir, any comments, sir, in this question, sir? In this ECC, sir? Uh, actually, Jinish, I have to borrow money. Always remember, you look at the age of the patient when you're mentioning LBH. You should have the criteria they borrow LBH. It's very important. Sir has mentioned a very important point. You say the voltage criteria mm -hmm. of the age difference. Sir, I, I want to ask the uh, student in, in this regard, sir. Voltage criteria, what is the voltage criteria? No, sir. Female, female. Uh, female? No. Gender on the way, sir. Gender on the way. Age. Age, how much? 40 or less. How much? It's 30. In case of in two, in there is two, uh, in two instances, LVH voltage criteria is 40. 
in case of age less than in some books it is 30 in some books it is 35 and in case of presence of lvv is there is presence of lvv voltage criteria is 40 sir any comments sir in this regard sir no abushe ha jodi age age 35 to 40 o ache 40 niche hoy tahole voltage criteria kintu different তোমরা যে ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া সেটা अप्लाई করার জন্য সেজন্য এইটা দেখা সব সময় ইম্পর্টেন্ট আর ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া এলোন না তোমাদের কিন্তু মেনশন করা উচিত ছিল দেখো লিড 1 এসটি ডিপ্রেশনটা এসটি ডিপ্রেশন আছে তো ডাউন স্লোপিং এসটি ডিপ্রেশন দেখতে পাচ্ছ তো আমরা জানি যে হ্যাঁ আমরা আমরা জানি যে রাম হিল যে ক্রাইটেরিয়া সেখানে হলো ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়ার জন্য 3 পয়েন্ট এসটি ডিপ্রেশনের জন্য 3 পয়েন্ট লেফট আর্টেরিয়াল এনলার্জমেন্টের জন্য 3 পয়েন্ট অলরেডি কিন্তু লেফট আর্টেরিয়াল এনলার্জমেন্ট এবং এসটি ডিপ্রেশন যদি ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া নাও থাকতো তাহলে কিন্তু এটা এলবিএস হতো মানে উইদাউট নোইং দা এস বলতে পারতো কিন্তু তুমি যেহেতু শুধু ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া বলছো সেহেতু আমাদের প্রশ্ন জাগবে যে তুমি তো বয়স জানো না কেন ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া বলতেছো বুঝতে পারছো জি স্যার জি স্যার তো আমরা রাম হিল ক্রাইটেরিয়াটাই অনেক ভালো রাম হিল ক্রাইটেরিয়া কিন্তু স্যার খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট বিষয় হচ্ছে রাম হিল ক্রাইটেরিয়া কমনলি আসছে ইন দা एग्जामिनेशन আচ্ছা আর ইনফেরিয়র এমআই সম্পর্কে ধরো আমি একটু মানে ইন্টারঅ্যাক্ট করতে চাই এটা পরীক্ষার জন্য না জানা জানি না কি এটা আমাদের শেষ না আর তো কিছু নাই স্যার এই ইয়ার স্যার এই কথা এক্সপ্রেস না আচ্ছা সেটা হলো যে এই پیشنটে দেখো কখন আমরা কিউ কে প্যাথোলজিক্যাল বলি ক্যান ইউ ক্যান ইউ টেল আস ওয়েন উই মেনশন আ কিউ অ্যাজ কিউ প্যাথোলজিক্যাল কিউ নিশ্চয়ই তার একটা ক্রাইটেরিয়া আছে সেই ক্রাইটেরিয়াটা ফিট করে কিনা দেখো তো লজিক্যাল কিউ এর ক্রাইটেরিয়া বলো খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট কোশ্চেন এটা বেসিক কোশ্চেন একদম যদি স্যার ওয়াইড সেট 3 মিলিমিটার এবং স্যার যদি স্যার 3 মিলিমিটার বেশি স্যার যদি বেশি 3 ওয়াই 2.5 না তো হইতেছে না তো এটা খুব বেসিক জিনিস দেখো খুব বেসিক জিনিস এটা কিন্তু আমরা অনেক সময় ঝামেলা হয় আমাদের এটা দে একজন বলো দে ফয়সাল বলো कमी <laughs> লিড 3 টা স্যার এই ক্ষেত্রে 3 টা বাদ 3 টা বাদ দাও 2 আর এবিএফ এর দিকে দেখো কিউ কিন্তু ফিলআপ করে নাই ক্রাইটেরিয়া করছে কি হাইটে করে নাই এখন ব্রেড ব্রেডটা বলো হোয়াইট কইতে হয় এবিএফ এ স্যার তো স্যার দুই ঘর বলা যাচ্ছে মনে হয় এবিএফ এ হোয়াইটটা কত হইলে পরে আমরা প্যাথোলজি সিঙ্গেল স্মল मुश्किल इम्पर्टेंट हलो लिट थ्री लिट थ्री एस टी डिप्रेशन इम्पर्टेंट मन पेशेंटर साधारण इनफेरियर एम आई हार सम्भवना बेसि কিন্তু এই پیشنটে কোন একটা ম্যানুভার করতে চাইতাম আমি বলো তো ইসিজি করার সময় কোশ্চেন বলো দি ইনফেরিয়র এমআই ইনফেরিয়র এমআই তে একটা ম্যানুভার করা লাগবে যে এমআই দিয়ে প্যাথোলজিক্যাল কিউ এফ ফর ম্যানুভার ফিজিওলজিক্যাল কিউ এফ পার্থক্য করা যায় ফিজিওলজিক্যাল প্যাথোলজিক্যাল কিউ এফ পার্থক্য করা যায় ডিং ইনস্পিরেশনে ইনফেরিয়র এমআই তে স্যার কিউ এফ তে ডিসঅ্যাপিয়ার করবে হুম 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 কিমা হাইটটা কমে যাবে আমি একটু প্রেফার করতাম এই پیشنটকে একটা ইনস্পিরেশন করে তারপর লিটিতে ইসে থাকতে পারে কিউ থাকতে পারে আর پیشنট এই پیشنটের বয়স তো জানি না আমরা ইয়াং پیشنটদের কিন্তু রিলেটিভলি কিউ ওয়েভটা প্রমিনেন্ট থাকে এল্ডারলি پیشنটদের চেয়ে ধরো এই پیشنটের বয়স যদি 26 হয় তাহলে কিন্তু এই কিউ ওয়েভকে আমরা আমলে দেব না কিন্তু پیشنটের বয়স যদি 72 হয় তাহলে এই কিউ ওয়েভগুলো আবার ইম্পর্টেন্ট এটা মনে রাখা উচিত যে যেমন ধরো ইয়াং پیشنটদের 
परीक्षार समय फिजोलजिकल The upper, uh, the left panel showing parasternal short axis view and great vessel level, showing there is uh, mosaic color jet in uh, around the pulmonary valve. Uh, and on the right panel, uh, they are showing uh, spectral Doppler of the same uh, same view. Showing the pulmonary valve, uh, pulmonary valve uh, uh, gradient is 69.3 millimeter. It's a high gradient. So, diagnosis: uh, pulmonary valvular stenosis, severe pulmonary valvular stenosis, with. डिस्टलिटिक कैन यू डिफरेंशिएट फ्रॉम दिस सर आमिर एक तो सर एक तो एक तो सर बिटवीन बल्बुलर एंड सुपर बल्बुलर आर्बिटी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन सर सुपर बल्बुलर इफ इट इस सुपर बल्बुलर स्टेनोसिस देन द मोजाइक जेट विल नॉट इंटरफेयर विद द बल्ब इट विल बी अबोव द बल्ब लेवल यस इन एम मोड इन एम मोड्स What is the how you differentiate in a mode between valvular and supravalvular stenosis, pulmonary stenosis? What is the shape of this stenosis stenotic lesion in the M mode? Pulmonary sir. Yeah. What is the in the uh, in the M mode M mode? It is. What is the uh, shape? In the M mode, what is the shape of the stenotic gradient? It is there is a term dagger shape. Yes, sir. Dagger shape. If there is a dagger shape stenosis like this, then it is a valvular. Valvular. And sir, in case of supravalvular, sir, do you have any comments, sir? Supravalvular, there is a carving of the yeah. uh, upslope and there is lead picking. The lead picking, yes. Spectral display. That actually a typical picture. Thake. I mean, Jani ji, co-optation of the outer to jerkum thake. স্পেকট্রাল লিসেটা দেখলি অন্য রকম লাগে আর ডাগার শেপ থাকলে ভালো লাগে এটা কিন্তু তোমাকে শুধু এম এম মোডটাই দিয়ে দিতে পারে পরীক্ষার সময় তাহলে তোমাকে বলতে হবে স্পেকট্রালে যেটা স্পেকট্রাল ডিসপ্লে হ্যাঁ এটা তোমার স্পেকট্রাল ডিসপ্লে এম মোড জন্য স্যার স্যার হ্যাঁ সরি সরি স্পেকট্রাল সরি স্পেকট্রাল এটা ডাগার শেপ এর কিন্তু স্যার উই ওয়ান্ট টু কম এন্ড স্যার টুডে স্যার ওকে আম স্টুডেন্ট অনেক ভালো করতেছে আর কি আর অন মাই পার্ট সব সময় Uh, it, it, it's my great pleasure. Because uh, 
শাহরিয়ার খুব ভালো একজন ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট আমার খুব প্রিয় একজন মানুষ না স্যার মানে দেখতেও ভালো লাগে কাজ শুনতেও ভালো লাগে সবকিছু ভালো লাগে থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ মানে তো মানে আমার মানে মানুষ হিসেবে অসাধারণ একজন মানুষ ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট হিসেবে অসাধারণ আমার আমি তো ইন্টারভেনশনে আমার ইনভলভমেন্ট রিলেটিভলি কম যার জন্য ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট যখন আমার সাথে একটু ইন্টারঅ্যাক্ট করে আমি খুব মানে আই ফিল প্রাউড অফ দ্যাট উৎসাহ colleagues and our moderator and uh, dr smita dr shamim and dr ishraq dr kolim for coming here and making this program such successful sir thank you sir sir you have uh, i want to give you, uh, you please give your comment and end this session sir am to comment bollam i or the abosto khubi bhalo mane amar amar khub bhalo lage thakte amar khub bhalo lage odesh sathe ar ami sob shomoy student der sathe thakte ekhon miss korte chhi sei samoy ta it's a great opportunity to me also থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার সবই শেষ করি হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ জি স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ স্